societal attitudes towards members of the Australian community who identify as being lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender have been problematic. We would like to conduct further research into how these negative attitudes, which often lead to homophobic violence, are formed. Specifically, we would like to conduct an observational analysis of the interactions of young heterosexual males with members of the LGBT community. We have reviewed previous Australian research and literature into sexuality and homophobic attitudes. Kay and Jeffrey's research seek to investigate violence in same-sex partnership and the reasons to which it is experienced differently than opposite sex relationship within Australia. The recurrent point made is the idea that intimate relationship between two men often disturbs the standard of society of hegemonic masculinity and causes social stigma in Western societies as the image of real men is often idealised. Semi-structured interviews were conducted with four service providers in Brisbane that were effective to understand the notion of masculine identity. However, the small-scale service only provided a generalisation of the issue as well as biased answer. Thompson and Mason's study argued that non-intersexuals are often labelled as sexual minorities as they act against the heteronormative social standards. They discovered that most acts of homophobic violence are committed by men. This is because men are following the principle of hegemonic masculinities that serves as gender police to sustain the power that men is believed to have and prevent gender inversion. To make their point, they examine a detailed study of official records of homicides with evident anti-gay and anti-homosexual motifs and an interview based on study of lesbians' experience of hostility and violence, both based within New South Wales and Victoria. The limitation is that they tend to study individuals that share the same characteristic leading to generalisation of the issue. Thompson 2002 attempted to narrow the focus of his early work of the 74 homicides in New South Wales that were thought to involve homophobic motivations. However, the limitations of over and under reporting bring the validity of the data into question. Hopwood and Connors' research paper explores the attitudes of heterosexual individuals towards heter homosexuality and the factor that they influence homophobic behaviour. Through examining anonymous questionnaires, it is suggested that males are more likely to have negative attitudes towards homosexuals than females. Through our secondary analysis, we have identified that none of the previous studies were, were able to identify how prejudices are affected by group mentality and additionally ways in which they can be effectively managed through education. We propose to conduct a naturalistic study of gay and heterosexual men in a group situation to ascertain pre-existing stereotypes of masculine identity, followed by an in-depth one-on-one interview to contrast the findings of the group situation.